Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ravya Javed and today we will be studying Ah, oh, it hurts so much. Oh my, are you okay? Don't worry, don't worry, let's get you checked. You will be all better soon. That poor soul was suffering so much. But don't worry, they'll get better soon. Now, where were we? Hmm. Right, we were about to start our session. But I'm sure you're wondering what that individual is suffering from. Good news. Our topic is based on the experience the individual is having. In medical terms, the pain, the experience that an individual is suffering from is called orofacial pain. Before we begin with the main topic, how about study a little bit about pain? What is pain, you ask? Well, according to the International Association for the Study of Pain, it is described as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Pain in the medical model is described as a symptom of disease to be diagnosed and treated. Unfortunately, finding a cause and a diagnosis cannot always be established. There is one thing that we must all have done at least once in our life and that is to use pain and suffering synonymously. However, they're both different. They both have different experiences. Suffering. Suffering not only includes the experience of pain, it also includes dehumanization, vulnerability, lack of control over time and space, and blocked coping methods. Suffering describes the painful experience beyond the sensory attributes. I know we were talking about pain, but since I mentioned the word suffering, I was kind of itching to tell you a little bit about it as well. Moving on, we're going to study the main topic and that is orofacial pain. Orofacial pain is a symptom of a broad spectrum of diseases. So if you're having pain somewhere around here, don't just assume it's related to teeth. There are many causes of orofacial pain and they're broadly classified as vascular causes, local causes and refer causes. The local causes include odontogenic diseases such as dental including deep caries and a defective restoration, periodontal such as periapical lesion, periodontal swelling and acute gingival inflammation, and lastly mucosal such as erosive or ulcerative lesions. Next are the referred causes. The referred causes of the pain are from the eyes such as glycoma, ear such as middle ear disease, neck such as cervical vertebral diseases, pharynx such as carcinoma of the pharynx, lung for example lung cancer, heart such as angina, esophagus such as esphagitis and lastly styloid process such as ego syndrome. Ego syndrome is a rare disorder in which the styloid process elongates causing pain upon chewing, swallowing and turning of the head. The vascular causes include migraine, migraineous neuralgia, and joint cell arthritis. There is another cause that is psychogenic cause and it includes psychological abnormality. The diagnosis for the orofacial pain is always very perplexing to the physician because orofacial pain has many causes. However, whenever there is orofacial pain, the first approach should be to eliminate any dental pathology. Moving on, we're going to study the classification of orofacial pain. We all love to classify things and why won't we? It's easy to remember and even to understand. However, it's more than just for the academic purposes. For researchers and practitioners, it is a way to communicate. There are three schemes in which orofacial pain is included and they are the International Association for the Study of Pain, the International Headache Society, and lastly, the American Academy of Orofacial Pain. The International Association for the Study of Pain has five axes. And no, it's not the X that you're imagining, it's a different one. Like I said, there are five axes and each one has its own definition. The first include regions. In, in it, there are face, head, and mouth. The second includes systems. 
such as nervous system. The third include temporal characteristics of pain such as continuous, recurring irregularly, and proximal. Next include patient's statement of intensity with time since onset of the pain. The intensity can be mild, moderate, or severe, with the time being one month, less than one month, or even more than six months. And lastly is the etiology, which includes infective, genetic, and psychological. The International Headache Society has 13 categories, and only two out of the 13 categories are specifically for oral facial pain. They are category 11 and 13, respectively. Category 11 includes temporal mandibular joint disorders and disorders related to teeth, jaws, and related structures, while category 13 includes cranial neuralgias and central causes of facial pain. The last of the classification is the American Academy of Oral Facial Pain. It includes disorders with examples. The disorders being intracranial pain disorder with examples, neoplasm, edemas, and such, then intraoral pain disorders, including tentopulp, periodontium, tongue, and such, then neurogenic pain disorders, including proximal neuralgias, then neurovascular disorders, including tension-type headache, then primary headache disorders, including migraine, migraine variants, and such. Next is temporal mandibular disorders, including temporal mandibular joint, muscle, mus masticatory muscles, and such. And lastly are the associated structures, including ear, eyes, neck, slurry glands, etc. So this is all for the classification. The next topic that we will be studying is examination and assessment of oral facial pain. So far, we have studied pain and a little bit about suffering. Then we've studied about oral facial pain and its causes. And then we studied the three classification of oral facial pain. Now we will study the examination and assessment. The examination and assessment of oral facial pain is challenging for the physician. And in order to minimize the risk of missing out on critical information, a systematic approach is used. History, physical examination, and behavior assessment usually serve as the basis for the diagnosis. First off, we'll start with the history. Evaluation of oral facial pain symptoms should include all the standard components of a medical interview, such as chief complaint, history of present illness, past medical history, review of system, medications, and family, social, and occupational history. Since many oral facial pain symptoms do not present physical abnormalities, history and description of pain are the basis for the diagnosis. Firstly is the history of present illness. Now, history of present illness assess three main areas. First is the description of pain and location. To describe pain, words such as stinging, shooting, burning, dull, etc. can be used, and the location can either be localized or journalized. The localized location can be such as dental pain, either lower or upper, left or right, and journalized can be area involving one side of the head. Next area that history of present illness assess is the intensity of pain. For that, a numeric scale is used, and there are many. One of such example is graphic rating scale. It has two points. One is no pain at all. The other one is pain as bad as it could be. Usually words such as mild, moderate, and severe are used or digits are used. Lastly is to assess the experience of pain. And for that, questionnaire is used. The most widely used questionnaire is the MPQ, which is McGill Pain Questionnaire. It includes questions such as, what word would you use to describe your pain right now? Next, past medical history and review of systems. We evaluate the past medical history in order to understand the patient's journal health, and it also gave us clues regarding the patient's present pain complaint. We review the systems so that we know whether the pain is a presenting feature or an ongoing complaint in a systemic disease. Medications are used to uncover any illness or pain that the patient failed to mention. Next is the family, social, and occupational history. So, 
just knowing about the history of present illness and past medical um, history is not important. Family, social and occupational history is as important. Chronic pain can hinder one's ability to maintain daily activities and fulfill responsibilities. Traumatic events, emotional experiences, change in marital status and or work, a close family members suffering from chronic pain or illness, they are all significant stresses and should be explored. The next topic we will study is physical examination. Physical examination may help to identify a normality that explains the cause of pain. It also helps to eliminate any serious disease related to pain. Physical examination includes inspection of the areas such as head and neck, palpation of muscles, soft tissues, and temporal mandibular joint, assessment and measurement of mandibular movement, cranial nerve examination, journal inspection of areas, ear, nose, and oropharyngeal, examination and palpation of the intraoral soft tissues, and lastly, examination of teeth and peritoneum, including occlusion. Moving on, we will study pain-related disability and behavior assessment. Pain-related disability and behavior assessment is yet another approach to help in the diagnosis. For behavior assessment, an interview is used. To assess disability and psychological factors, self-reported questionnaire and instruments including method of scoring are used. The assessment should include the following. Number one, events preceding and following exhibition of pain. Number two, patient's daily activity that includes how they spend their time during the day and the evening and how their activities are affected, whether they have modified them or eliminated them. Then we should explore, explore relatives and close family members suffering with chronic pain of similar nature. And lastly, the degree of affective disturbance. It includes change in mood or outlook on life. It includes vegetative sign of depression such as decreased sexual desire, change in food intake, sleep disturbances. And lastly, satisfaction level with friends and family. Next, we will study the diagnostic imaging. Diagnostic imaging are used to, number one, confirm a suspected abnormality. Number two, to screen or rule out any possible abnormalities that are not detected by other methods. And number three, to establish the extent of an identified abnormality. It is one of the best methods to evaluate, number one, an ongoing inflammation, two, infection or suspected tumor in sites that are not easily accessible. Next is diagnostic nerve block. Nerve block interrupts the transmission of nociceptive impulses through specific pathways. Pain is termed nociceptive and nociceptive means sensitive to toxic stimuli. Though they are variable, the results are equivocal and they do not always contribute to an accurate diagnosis. Nerve blocks to diagnose sympathetically maintained pain include local anesthetic block, regional block, and intravenous block. All right, we just have a few more topics to cover and then we'll be done. The next is laboratory tests. Laboratory tests have a limited value except in special circumstances. Why they have limited value? Because most orofacial pain disorders do not produce abnormalities that can be detected in laboratory specimens, except for temporal arthritis and collagen vascular diseases. Next is consultation and referral. Consultation and referral can be used for a number of reasons. For a complex pain problem, help from other specialists may be necessary. Referrals are used for the following reasons. Number one, to establish or confirm a suspected or unknown diagnosis. Number two, for the purpose of treatment after that diagnosis has been established. And number three, to get a second opinion on the diagnosis that it has been established or treatment recommendation. The last is special circumstances in the assessment of the orofacial pain patients. It has two aspects, and the first one is the orofacial pain disorders possibly confused with toothache. There are few characteristics of orofacial pain disorders that can cause this confusion. The confusion can be because of the location of the pain, the quality of pain suggesting an inflammatory process, or 
the increased pain by stim upon stimulating teeth and related tissues. The second is oral fissure pain symptoms indicating a serious disease. Now, presenting signs and symptoms of oral fissure pain disorders may suggest a possibly serious or life-threatening disease and indicate an urgent need to establish a diagnosis. These conditions may warrant a referral as a, as a part of thoroughly and timely evaluation. We are at the last topic of the session and it is management. For management, it is important to first identify and then treat the underlying cause of pain. The management is based on the diagnosis. However, we won't go into, into depth in management of the each and every diagnosis because they are a lecture in their own, though I will give you an overview. There is a considerable variation, individual variation to pain response and the threshold is lowered by tiredness, psychogenic and other factors. But treatment is generally helped by reassurance and number one, paracetamol, NSAIDs and analgesic if the pain is of the odontogenic region, tryptans if the pain is of the vascular regions, anticonvulsants if the pain is of the neurogenic region and lastly, antidepressants if the pain is of the psychogenic region. This is the end of the session. I hope it was informative for you. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy and study hard with skadia.com.